May pips be upon you. Good morning. Uh, calling, calling all uh, subscribers and potential subscribers. I <laughs> uh, just want to bring your attention to a strategy that I um, that is a little different than what I've been posting. This is for scalps on the 15. What I do is I look at the four hour and the one hour for structure and bias, and then uh, the one hour and 30 minute for behavior. And uh, I will peak at the five minute, but I execute on the 15. Okay. And uh, uh, that gives me, you know, some structure, some framework in which to work. Okay. And uh, I'm looking at gold. Gold is going to be my focus. And uh, what I want to do is concentrate on getting one good trade per day. I'm going to put uh, 50 to, uh, 50 percent to one whole uh, percent uh, a full one percent of my account on each of these trades targeting 10 pips I want to secure 10 pips now if the trade goes longer fine I'm going to leave a runner for the for the remainder but at 10 pips I want to secure uh, uh, the bag there and, uh, I'll take 80% and leave 20% to, to run. All right. And anything after that is bonus. And I'm also at the same time going to be moving my stop loss to break even. So I don't lose anything with the, uh, with the runner, nothing. Okay. I'm looking to gain and I'm going to trail that uh, runner with my stop loss. Every time it breaks a high, I'm going to bring it to the uh, bring it below the low of the of that candle. OK, every time it breaks a new high, breaks a candle high, I'm going to bring it to the low of that candle. OK, now I hope that's pretty clear. Now you see how price is moving up up here, but there's a story uh, It's moving up to this resistance level and there's a story here. All right, I want to take you through that story. All right, let me go with the first slide. All right, uh, you'll see the writing on here. This was the original, the, the first trade. Price uh, created this uh, support here at this level here already. All right, you see how there was already support here. All right, and then price went uh, pushed up, and then it came down with uh, some nice impulses. With correction impulse and then it created this uh base here all right so we have a drop base now we have a rally all right what did, what did i say i wanted to do i just want to target 10 good pips at at the point of 10 good pips i'm going to close uh, cl close off 80 percent of the trade and then move my stop loss to break even all right you'll see i have arrows here uh the uh the support is formed all right uh we broke the uh trading range this consolidation here and once we had a break above then uh uh we executed the trade now what i look for is um like you see how this this candle had this rejection why did it have this rejection cuz i'm making note where the uh uh where there's previous support or resistances, and in this case, support, and I mark them off with the grays. I say potential resistance here, 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 all right? And whenever I see a uh, price, uh, uh, you know, making a dip and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it, you see the resistance, where it runs into resistance and reverses, I'm going to make a note of those areas. All right. Because that's potentially where price could become sensitive to. All right. And, uh, once we, uh, once we had this candle here, I said, as soon as I get a, a candle that breaks that high, then, uh, there's a high probability chance that price will, uh, uh, go on to the next level of resistance. All right. I waited for that candle and that candle came. All right. This is an impulse entry. An impulse entry is one where I don't wait for a close. I just go go with the momentum towards my TP. All right. 
once it breaks the high. All right. This candle did not break the low. This candle, the entry candle, did not break the low of the previous candle. It uh, found uh, some support here. Did not leave a wick. You understand? It did not leave a wick. It just opened up bullishly. So I figured that was a high probability uh, uh, trade. And it was. It went straight to the target. Boom, bang. All right. Hit that resistance here. And that's where I TP. So we got a successful trade. Yay. Right? Next. What do we got here? Well, uh, uh, if the next candle closes below this one, trade is invalidated. Meaning, if uh, because price ran into this area here, now I had buys above this, this level would be good. But I had my eye on possible places where I would run into some trouble. All right. And you see the rejection here. So I marked it. All right. And uh, like I did on the previous slide. So uh, I, I also forgot to mention, you see these, these, uh, bearish candles here. Well, it's, it, I look at that as smooth traffic. All right. There are no, you know, stops and, uh, you know, other white candles, you know, other bullish candles in there. It's all the same uniform color. So when price comes back and corrects this move up here, it's not going to run into a whole bunch of crap. You know, it's just a, a whole bunch of speed bumps. It's just going to, uh, there's a, a good, chance that price will smoothly go to the top, just like it did here. This is smooth candles here, smooth traffic. And we didn't have that much trouble uh, getting to there. We did have a pullback here. All right. And guess what? If you, you go to the top of this candle, go to the left, you would see that there was a possibility that we would have some problems at this uh, this level. And I did, I failed to mark it. But, but I it's probably because I thought it was going to be pretty uh uh, you know, low, low, low resistance there. Well, it was uh, stronger than I had suspected really, but uh, we did make it by. And uh, that's the way I'm looking at this area here. All right. These areas here are some possible spots. So I don't want to make the same mistake I made over here. So I, I, I want to extend those over here. Okay. Now, if, so we, we've broken through, we've closed above of my buy area, but we have this area here of rejection and that's where it rejected. So this is, this is why you mark out those resistances. So I said, okay, uh, if this closes bearish, maybe it comes down here, co comes down here, maybe it comes down here, but if it go closes past this candle, then I'm going to just, you know, reassess, you know, price might be heading back down. Uh, there might be a higher chance if price closes below this candle, there might be a higher chance that price is going to continue downwards. All right. But uh, as long as I don't get a close below this level here, just like over here, just like over here, if I don't get a close below that level, I'm going to still be bullish on this pair. OK. I think I explained that pretty good. So let's go to the next one. And what are we doing there? Oh, we're still dilly dallying. Okay, that's the dilly dally before the uh, New York Stock Exchange opened. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, price did come down to the base of this candle, but it did not close. All right, it did not close bearishly below that level, so that's good. So now I move my arrow over to this candle. If this candle breaks these highs then I'm going to take an impulse entry. Impulse entry, a price breaks these highs with momentum. Price is likely to continue higher. Yes, I'm going to go with the momentum towards my TP. All right. If it doesn't break this these lows, that means we're still bullish and we still have some bullish momentum. And I'm going to take that momentum to my, my uh, nearest uh, um, resistance. And I'm going to keep these areas in mind as price climbs. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, see uh, buys above this area because prices formed a resistance here, a resistance level. Uh, so we need price to once price breaks this level breaks. We have a breakout. 
because this is a breakout strategy, then you know there's a high probability chance that price will continue higher, right? Okay. And here we are. Price uh, uh, opened a new candle, came all the way down here, all right? Came all the way down here and then rejected. Now, why would price do that? Probably because there was some liquidity here, 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 here. People who took longs came down, swept, <laughs> swept those uh, uh, stop losses and continued on its way up. Devilish, devilish. All right, but uh, we were ready for it, right? Because we we hadn't entered anything yet. Because price didn't uh, uh, bullishly uh, break out past this level. We did get it this time. All right, so we ended the trade here. All right, and uh, price moved very, very, very nice with a lot of momentum aggressively up to. Uh, uh, towards our TP. Now, here where this T, where this where, where I have my uh, TP line at, this is twenty pips. We only needed half of this, all right? So consider this: at half, at half of this, entering in this trade with one percent uh, of your account, at half of this you would have taken those 10 pips. Now I have a long, a, a, a very long uh, stop loss here. All right. So if price uh, gets to that 10, that 10 mark, uh, the, the 10 pip mark, I'm closing most of my trade. Excuse me. I'm closing most of my trade. All right. I'm probably closing 90% because if it comes back and hits that break even, I'm going to be 90% up 10 pips. I only want 10 pips. All right. But because I had such an extensive uh, stop loss on this uh, and I'm glad, uh, uh, you know, I, I ended here. I could have put my stop loss right under this under this level here. All right. But because there was this uh, this long this long uh, uh, wick here, I decided to leave the wick. I decided to leave the stop loss there. But so I went to I uh, waited till I got to one to one. All right. Once it gets once it gets to your 10 pips, though, you can close the whole trade and you're done for the day. Do you understand? All right. But make sure it's at least one to one. That's something I want to throw out there. Make sure you're at least one to one. OK, not like this. I was being extra careful. All right. Over time, if you risk more than what you where your TP is, over time, over a number of trades, that's not going to be a winning prop, uh, 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 a winning, a winning, um, propo uh, you know, uh, situation. Uh, uh, so you want to make to make sure it gets the one to one like I did around one to one, and then take your TP. All right, but I took eighty percent here. I took 80%, left the 20% runner because I was pretty confident uh, price is going to hit that TP. I only, I, I, I'm looking at the way it uh, uh, it missed my TP by about maybe two or three pips. All right. I would normally get out here. And I would recommend if price comes this low and starts to uh, show re retracement, t get out. All right. Some people say, no, you got to stay at the TP and everything like that. There. I don't. Get it while it's there on the table. If you miss it by two or three pips, you know this could go all the way back to your TP and uh, take tap you out of uh, break even. Forget that. Take uh, take the two or three pip less and and go away happy. That's what I do anyway. <laughs> Enough on that one. And here we are now. Price came back to that area, miss me by again, I buy about, you know, a couple of pips. So I, I took my, my TP here. All right. So I had a 20% runner that was still running that ran a probably another, uh, uh, eight pips. Maybe I don't know what this is. Uh, but, uh, the whole thing ended up 20, uh, 25, 25 to 28 pips. I mean, this was a great 
trade much double over almost triple what I needed for the day. The 20% runner is valuable, folks. It adds value to your trades. Leave that 20% runner. Get out at 80% on a 10 pip trade. Secure those 10 pips and let the bonus come after that. All right. Make sure whenever you uh, secure profits, you move your stop loss. Move your stop loss uh, either to break even or further into profit. You understand? That's how you secure the bag. All right. And so far, look how look where we're at uh, right now. I'm so glad I took profits here. I would have missed my TP. You know what I mean? You understand? I ju that's how I justify things. All right. Now it would have hit a break even on my 20 if I would have left it on. And that's fine. I would have, I wouldn't have lost the dog on dime. I would have had 80 percent of my uh, uh, of my TP. Now, if I bet one hundred dollars, I would have got eighty dollars. No problem. You know what I mean? You know, I, I can live with that. All right. But this was more than eighty dollars. This was more than the uh, 80 that 80 percent because I got way more than 10, 10 pips. You only need one of these a day, folks. If you're risking 1%, if you got a $1,000 account, you're risking 1,000 and you make eight, eight, um, 1,800, you know, what, 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 are you, what are you hanging around for? You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to get 2,000 out of it. You know what I mean? You want to, you want to what was this, the risk of the RR on this? I'm sorry. What was the RR? Oh, 1.5, one and a half. That's fine. Yeah, okay, that's because I had this big uh, doggone uh, stop loss on here. But I usually like to go for at least two, two. But if I get one and a half, that's fine. Because over time and number of trades, you're going to come out ahead. You understand? But uh, uh, at the very least, uh, anything better than one to one is best. All right. I secure my trades at one to one. I secure 10 pips. If I, whatever I do, I'm not going to lose those 10 pips. And if I get 10 pips and uh, they're costing me, uh, uh, if I bet $100 and it's cost me $10 per, you know what I mean? And I got, I, I, I just made, uh, uh, secured uh, uh, 100 on top of my 100. Come on, man. You know, just don't be greedy. This is how you limit greed. This is how you limit over trading. And this is how you limit uh, a revenge trading. Okay. Take two trades. Take two trades. If the first one loses, no problem. Take another one. If that one wins, now you're ahead because you, ha uh, you have, uh, you made sure you uh, um, uh, risk more than one to one. It doesn't really matter about that. You want to get 10 pips uh, on top of your risk. You want 10 pips on top of your risk. You understand? You get those 10 pips, you're going to be, a, you're going to be back uh, in the blue uh, after two trades. All right. You missed the first one. You, uh, you lost a hundred dollars. You gain, you gain on the second one. You, um, and you got a one to two. Well, you got $200. You're up a hundred dollars for the day, period. All right. If that's a thousand dollars, that's even better. Right. If you're risking the thousand dollars and you get two thousand on that second trade, you're up a thousand dollars for the day. What are you complaining about? Right. Uh, uh, but I, I do want you to know that one to two trades is is should be the limit. If you hit on your first trade, if you win on your first trade, close up shop and go enjoy the rest of your day doing whatever you want to do. Paper trade after that. If you if you have that need, paper trade after that. But secure your your bag, man. Secure the bag. All right? Now, with this one, we're done here. But what I would do is I would put these same signs on this one. Uh buys above here and and uh, we're looking at candlesticks. You know, you get a candle uh, closure above this uh, resistance, you know, which is, uh, hmm. 
I want it closure above 1788, 439. All right, 